This short video is going to give you a brief run through of the tiling option in VersaWorks. We're going to use uh, the image that you can see here, these solar panels on a roof, and the image is 3.5 metres by 1.9. The idea of the tiling menu is that it will help you to break up an image into manageable sections for your printer. So if you've got a 54 inch machine and somebody comes to you asking for a 7 metre wall installation, VersaWorks will take that 7 metre artwork and it will break it up into managing, manageable sections for your printer. It will also give overlap lines and registration marks to help you with the installation as well. So the example that we're going to use today has been brought into the print queue at full size, 3.5 metres by 1.9. I would advise that if you're dealing with anything over five, six metres, bring it into VersaWorks, scaled, and then scale it back up here in your uh, layout section as you would normally. Once you've got it to full size, you can then do your quality settings, colour management settings, all, all that side of things is completely uh, normal. You do that exactly the same as you would do with any other print. What you can see on the initial layout section though is that VersaWorks has done two sections of it as wide as possible and then whatever's left over. So whatever image you put in, if it's bigger than the um, potential or the possible output of your machine, it will fill the width with as many panels and then give you whatever's left over. And obviously for most installations of wall graphics or vehicles, we want all of those uh, drops to be, to be equal. So if you go into the clip and tile menu, which is three up from the bottom on the left there, you will see that uh, it tiles, it gives you these panels that you can select, and that will show you how VersaWorks has broken it up. In the tiling menu here, it will show exactly what it's done. You can go into tile size, where you can specify the size of each tile, or the most common one, you can go into number of tiles here, which will allow you to break up the image into uh, as many different sections, uh, either vertically or horizontally as you like. On this one, what we tend to look for is uh, making sure that the width of the panel is going to be manageable. So if this was a vehicle trailer or it was a wall graphic, printing it into two sections, each one you can see here is gonna be 1.7 wide. Um, that's not going to be uh, doable on the machine, but also it's not going to be very manageable when you're putting it up. Three sections, that gives you each section at 1100, which is manageable. Four sections, 875. So as you can see, you pick what you want and you can see the visual representation there. And then VersaWorks will give you the information on how wide each section is going to be. So let's say, for example, we're going to break this one up into, into four pieces you can see those four tiles on the screen there. You've got this box here which is place alternated. What this will do, the best way to demonstrate this is going back into the layout. So as you can see on the layout tab now, that will put our, our, our panels on there. So as we scroll down, you'll see the fourth panel down there. If in the clip and tile menu, we had selected place alternated, you would see each one of those panels up there. Each one of those panels rotated by 180 degrees. Now the idea of doing that is that by placing, by printing them in, an, in the alternated way, so by flipping every other one 180 degrees, each joined side of the print is being printed by the same side of the machine. So if you imagine these panels coming out of the machine, printed normally, this one will have been printed by the right hand side of the machine, this one will have been printed by the left hand side of the machine, so there may be a very very slight difference in the colour, in the dry time, in the finish, and it, it can be noticeable on gradients, on deep colours, so if you have got a long run of tiles like this, clicking place alternated is what I'd recommend, it will turn every other one around and so when you do match them up you're matching up an image that's been print printed on the same side of the printer. Overlap, now this will, if we were to not have an overlap on there, this will print four panels out, each of which will need butting up to each other exactly to join up. Now normally in an installation on a wall graphic or a vehicle you will need some sort of overlap and there's a number of reasons for that. The most the most sort of 
The, the main reason for it is that in the material there will be some slight shrinkage depending on the material that you're using. Also, the surface that you're fitting to, whether it be a wall or an aluminium vehicle body, they won't always be perfectly square and flat. So there may be some inconsistencies in the substrate that you're fitting them to. So by giving yourself a slight overlap, you're making sure that um, the graphics are going to last for as long as possible. You're giving yourself the best chance possible to line them up and you're not going to see any, any white space or... Um, any of the substrate behind when they when butting them up obviously doesn't go millimeter perfect so there's a couple of options when it comes to overlap top left and as we click on there you'll see these dotted lines appear to actually illustrate where the overlap is going to be top left will give you an overlap to every left side and top and then by selecting all corners that will give you an overlap to every edge of the print and again, it really depends on where you're installing it to, if this is a piece of another piece of artwork or if it's one on its own. Generally speaking, we will use top left, so we get one on the top and, and one on the left of each piece where, where necessary. You are also able to print overlap lines. So with this not selected, what you will find is that you will get uh, 10 mil of overlap but there won't be any marks to tell you where that overlap is. You will use the image as the guide to fit it. Now that overlap you can increase or decrease. You can make that as big as you like. Usually 10 to 12 mil tends to be quite an industry standard. If we were to print overlap lines, where these dotted lines are showing the overlap, it will actually print um, a, a, a line. So on one hand that's quite quite good depending on the installation because it gives you a visual point of lining up the whole of the graphic again the downside of that is if the substrate isn't perfectly flat or something goes slightly wrong with the installation you only need to be a few mil off and that line suddenly becomes visible so what VersaWorks allows you to do is set the thickness of that line and also the colour of that line using a CMYK code and where this can be really useful is you can almost create uh, an overlap line that you know is there as an installer, but maybe the, to, to somebody looking at it, to the customer or to somebody passing by, they wouldn't be able to see it. So as an example, if this was a, a black background or a very dark grey, you could pick a CMYK code that was just slightly off that background colour, and so you would know the line was there. You could use it to line up the prints, but if something did go wrong and you went off slightly, it wouldn't necessarily be uh, as stark as a black line on a, on a white print, for example. Once you've got all of the settings dialed in, so you've decided four tiles, top left overlap 12 mil, you can have these very thin overlap lines. If you look into the layout section, it will show all four of these being printed at once. But what you can do is right click on any of the tiles that you don't want to be printed. So you must always have one visible, but VersaWorks will allow you to right click and either expose or turn off any of those tiles. So this is quite useful if you just want to print one at a time or if you've done a job and a customer's come back to you saying a section of the wall or the truck's been damaged, you can go back into the artwork and you can just print the last two or the last one or one from the middle or whichever one you need, you can turn that on and off. And once you've selected the tile that you do want to print, you'll see as normal in the layout section, it will be there, you can centre it on the media, you can do whatever you want to do with that. Um, if you do select two of them and you've got place alternated on there, you will see them pop up together. So there'll be one print run. And essentially that is tiling. I hope that's been useful. Um, as always, it's not a very in-depth look, but it does give you the basics of getting to grips with it. But as we say, as always, if you have any more questions or you want to see any more specific content around any of it, feel free to either leave a comment on the video or you can send us over an email. All the details will, uh, will be in the, in the text at the bottom of this video.